Welcome to the Spoken Word on another Tuesday. This is the last Tuesday of the year 2020, and I cannot fail to acknowledge some of you who have been a blessing and an addition to our ministry over the year. Your friendship has been definitely worth celebrating. Mansa and I salute you for who you are and what you have added into our lives. I acknowledge the role of all my senior pastors and their wives and the support team who have contributed and worked hard to make this year a very fruitful and successful year. Um, you have been a blessing of God to enrich our lives. I make special mention of Reverend Oscar Amonuniza and Sandra, Pastor Ebo and his wife Rini, and all the teaming support I get from all the ministers all over who continue to fellowship who continue to add to the quality of our ministry. As we end the year, I want to remind you that on the Thursday, the 31st of December, we shall cross over into 2021. Our theme for the year 2021 is our year of influence. And so just to prep you a little, I want to share a few things with you. We are going to move from a level of obedience into a level of honor. Obedience suggests that you are under a law and you have to obey. Anna suggests a code of willing giving and offering that honors the Lord our God. Children are taught obedience, but adults have, have to learn to choose to honor. It is their choice. And so we are moving out into the year 2021 with a deliberate code of conduct that we will honor. That is how we will enter into our year of influence. I want to suggest to all of you to build a system that rejects dishonor at every level. In the house of God, among our ashes, our prayer warriors, those of us who come up the stage, remember our code is honor and everything we do must honor the Lord. Honor is the foundation of true worship. We honor the Lord because this is right, not because there's a reward or there's a sanction, but we have grown to maturity and we do things that is right. I want to read a verse from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 29 to 30. This is God speaking to the children of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas. And in verse 29, he says, Wherefore do you kick at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and unrest thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people, verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that my house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. The key phrase there is that for them that honor me I will honor. God is reprimanding the house of Eli at the way their children kick at the sacrifice. The first word that strikes a chord is the word kick. Offerings usually are received with a hand, but they treat it lightly because they use their feet. They kick at it. They despise it. They don't value it. So God is saying that what I value in my house, which I've commanded in my habitation, to be pleasing to me, you treat it lightly. And he says that because of that, I have changed my mind about you. Initially, I had decided that once you were born in a certain house, the priesthood will pass on naturally to you. But now, it's no longer going to be an entitlement mentality. I'm changing my mind. I will deal with people according to the way they deal with me. So we are moving away from an entitlement mentality into a system where you qualify by your actions to stand before the Lord. Why do we honor the Lord? Because the Lord is worthy. Because he is worthy of our deep respect and appreciation. And we need to celebrate him for who he is. He's unique. There's nobody that can be compared to our God. I know that with our mouth, we all claim that Jesus is Lord and that there's none that can be compared with him. But do we serve him as if there's none that can be compared with him? Do we speak about him? Do we act toward him as if he's above compare with any other person? Sometimes we treat other people even better than we treat the Lord our God. But he deserves our highest honor. As we enter into the year 2021, the code of honor must be manifest in everything we do. We need to be able to let our hearts show, our deeds show, 
that God is above all and none can be compared to him. We honor God because of his uniqueness. He is God. He created the heavens and the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. No one compares to our God. And so it is important to recognize God in your life and give him public acknowledgement and celebrate who he is and what he has done. We honor God as the life source. All creation comes from God. He is God because he's the creator of the heavens and the earth and he owns it. How do we honor God? This is what he says. Them that honor me, I will also honor. So you can determine the quality of your future by your actions towards our God now. It's no more an entitlement mentality. I know you are a child of God, but you have to make a choice to serve him out of honor. This is in reference, this particular passage, is in reference to how people treated the offerings of God. It is not enough to be a child of God. Honor God by the way you give your offerings to God. Those who honor me, I will honor. This is what God is saying. When you give freely without compulsion, but with a heart that esteems God and holds God in high regard, then you give him honor. So we can honor God in five ways. Number one, we honor God with our speech, the things we say, how we speak about him and how we speak to him. Number two, with what we do, our actions must honor God. Number three, with our body. Remember your body is the temple of the living God. Don't do anything to dishonor God in your body. The things you eat, the things you put into your body. Avoid drugs, avoid things that will affect the quality of your body and honor God with your body. The fifth way we honor God is with our first fruits and our substance. Let us honor God with our first fruits and our substance. In church, may we create an environment to honor him in the service. Honor God by creating an atmosphere without distraction. Honor God by creating an atmosphere for reverence for the preaching. The voice must be clear. The sound departments and everything we do must bring honor to God so that the word we speak can be heard clearly by all. Honor God by adopting an attitude of reverence for the preaching of the word. Sit with rapt attention. Bring your Bible along. Don't distract other people from hearing the word of God. Do not make unnecessary calls or rise up during the service and walk out. Let's honor God by retaining the practice of opening and searching the scriptures and reading publicly and aloud. Retain the practice of searching the scriptures. Don't just come to church and sit down and watch. Be involved and honor God. And number five, as we preach the word of God, let's preach it with reverence. It is not our word. The word we preach is the word of God. Let it feed the people and let them hear the word of God well. These are little things that bring honor. Sometimes we want to wait to do a lot, but it starts with an attitude of reverence. May we honor the Lord in the year 2021. As we honor the Lord, according to his word, he will also honor us. It is true we are children of God. We don't have an entitlement mentality. We have a duty to honor him. May honor spring from you. Honor the Lord your God with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. 2021 is definitely going to be a year of influence. Get ready. You will provoke subtle change all around you. You will be light. You will be salt. You will be yeast. Your influence will be felt in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. This is God's doing and this is God's word in our lives. But the keynote is to start by honoring God with your life. Shalom, peace, and life to you. I pray for you. I pray to see you on the 31st night as we cross over into our year of influence. In Jesus' name, amen.